Welcome to this unit on the Android in film. Our goal over the next three weeks is to look at three different films that all deal with a similar issue or problem through this notion of the, the simulated human, which has become wildly popular in the 20th and 21st century in TV, film, literature, etc. Um, and the way this is going to work for us, I'm going to give you a video lecture now that talks about some of the general ideas about the Android on film, and I'll give a very brief introduction to each movie. Then I'll give you another lecture on Blade Runner specifically, really looking at the elements of film form in there and some ideas about that movie. And then I've tried to give you written lectures for the next couple weeks. So that way you can take these same ideas and just develop them each week uh, and see where you go and see how different movies deal with this topic. Okay. First thing, we need to start with a guy named Philip K. Dick. Uh, he's a, a science fiction writer um, who wrote an extraordinary amount of literature uh, through the 50s uh, to the early 80s. And here's a story about him that I think summarizes the types of ideas he's playing with. Um, this dude's walking down the street one day in San Francisco and he finds his house and his door is sort of broken open and someone seems to have smashed into his house broken into the safe and taken something very important. We, we never know what's inside that safe. So this is Philip K. Dick, and he's telling this story about uh, what he did and how terrified he was, um, how paranoid he was that someone was watching him, that someone stole something important to him. And he's trying to figure out, so who did this? Was it one of the kids in the neighborhood? Was it he used to have host sort of drug parties? Was it one of the kids who I get high with? Was it my, my wife or my ex-wife? Was it the CIA or the FBI? He actually was on an FBI watch list. And finally, he comes up with an idea that he talks about that uh, I think is pretty funny and pretty interesting. He says, you know what? I think it was me. I think I was bored. I think I was trying to hide something from myself. So I must have gone to my house, made it look like a break-in, stole something from my own safe, and hid it on myself. And of course, on one level, that just sounds utterly ridiculous. But once you watch a movie like Blade Runner, those sorts of worries about oneself and one's desires and one's unconscious uh, seem to make a little more sense. And to me, that little story exemplifies the types of questions that an Android narrative is going to ask us. Most Android narratives are not asking the realistic question, what will artificial intelligence be like? Or what will actual Androids be like? Will they rise up and kill us or something like that? Um, usually they're asking a type of a social, ethical, um, what's called ontological question. Ontology is the study of being. So just trying to figure out, well, not who am I, not the identity part, but what am I? We use this word human. What does that mean exactly? Not what we want it to mean, not what different social groups or different religions tell us it means. What does it actually mean with all of those ideas uh, at play? So some of the questions that the Android brings up for us um, is, well, are we all Androids? Um, are we programmed? Do we get programmed by school, by me, right? By parents, um, by entertainment, by advertisers, by the people we are around, by the songs uh, we listen to, etc. And according to all cognitive theorists, right, uh, and the entire discipline of sociology, well, of course we're programmed. Uh, I'm programmed with certain sentences. I'm programmed. Uh, with melodies to play on guitar. I'm programmed on how to drive a car. So program doesn't necessarily mean you are a mindless, soulless machine, um, but it does sort of suggest that the type of control we think we have over our lives might not be as total as we want it or dream it to be. Um, also, the question of the human and the android seems to be about we assume things that we have or that we, we tell ourselves we have. Humans have empathy. Humans can love. Humans have souls. Well, who says? Uh, where's the proof of that? I can talk about my empathy all day long as I hurt people, as I not empathize with people. I can talk about the depth and beauty of my internal life as I act in the exact opposite ways. By having an android and saying the android, the robot, cannot feel. I don't have to prove that I can feel. I can just assume that I do. So how are androids what we would call ideological mechanisms? We created a figure that we can use as a scapegoat and thrust all of the things that we don't want to have to prove about ourselves onto something and say, it's not you, you don't have this. 
Um, you'll see in Blade Runner specifically, the android is uh, used as a slave. And so we're being asked, how have we done this throughout history? How have one group of people said, oh, you guys are unintellectual savages, so you're not really people. Or even go back to the 1790s and in America, the way we thought about, well, who's a person? A white male landowner. Other people, you know, aren't really people. They're not really citizens in the same way. We had 7 million people in the country, 40,000 were human enough to be citizens and vote. So these are the sorts of ideas that the android forces us to think about in a sort of weird metaphoric way. Um, the other thing about the android, I think, how do we just deal with people who are different than us, who are programmed differently, whether that's two religions or your family's rich, my family's poor, we get together, we might use words differently, we might define the world differently, we might think about politics differently, um, the, the worth of life, the value of life differently. And how do we talk about that? And the Android problem really tries to say, I think pretty critically, that we tend to be fairly bad at truly being open-minded and empathetic to the human beings in front of us if they don't seem to be programmed the way we want them to be programmed or act the way we want them to act or think they should act, etc. So these are some of the issues that the android brings up. Now let me think about style just for a second. This is very much a science fiction movie, Blade Runner, that we're going to talk about this week. Um, and it's important to know that science fiction in general is just asking the question, what if? Um, what if technology were a little different? What if social systems were a little different? What if the government were a little different? What would life look like and be like? Um, specifically, Blade Runner comes out in 1982, and it's fighting a couple other science fiction movies. For example, Star Wars comes out in 1977, five years previously, and just rewrites the script for what a science fiction movie is. A lot of people would say it's not even science fiction, it's fantasy. Other people would say, sorry, there's sort of laser swords and, and spaceships, it's science fiction. But what Blade Runner tries to do is to fight against Star Wars, to say, man, we are in a totally different type of universe. Star Wars is very famous for having this opening scroll, this little narrative written in words that scrolls across the screen while this fanfare music plays, and it's very exciting. Blade Runner, you'll notice, opens in a similar way with words on the screen, but a much more bureaucratic, business-like, boring, maybe even cold way. And it just gives us some definitions. This is what the world does. This is what a replicant is. This is what's happening in the world. Here it is. So you can see that it's fighting against the type of future that Star Wars might show us versus Blade Runner. Next week, also a futuristic film, definitely science fiction, but uh, very much a romance movie. Very much a romance movie. Her is basically about a divorce and a new romance and how strange and difficult and complicated that can be for us. <coughs> um, and then the next week, Ex Machina, definitely science fiction again. We're dealing with androids. But we're dealing with two men basically creating a female robot. And this ends up being a, a, a psychological thriller. It ends up being about two guys in love with the same woman. Kind of. And the types of manipulations and violences they sort of play with each other. So over the next few weeks, see how those different types of movies deal with the android question, perhaps differently. Um, hopefully this has been a little bit informative for you, getting you a little bit comfortable with how to deal with the philosophical nature of the android question and problems. Um, feel, see if, uh, hopefully we'll see you in a few minutes uh, with the lecture on actual on Blade Runner. I'm sorry my sentences were so garbled uh, there for the last few minutes. I've been cooking downstairs and I know that something's burning right now and I need to go take care of it. Anyways, we'll see you guys soon.